Uh, I, I would like to start uh, thanking the organizing committee for inviting me to be here today to discuss about pancreatic nets and of course all of you for remaining Saturday afternoon to listen to us. <laughs> That's nice. So here are my disclosures. And I would like to start this talk just by briefly reminding uh, just a very few uh, um, drugs or therapeutic strategies that are currently approved for the treatment of pancreatic nets, which, which are summarized in this really uh, simple table. And as you can see there, if, since the um, streptozolazine was first approved in early 80s based on the Myrtle study uh, in islet cell uh, tumors, We've been almost 30 years with no new drug in the horizon. This is really sad as antiproliferative agent. Then in 2011, we, it was a good year for us because sunitinib and everolimus was up, were approved for this indication. Then in 2014, lanreotide was approved as an antiproliferative agent for G1 and low G2 uh, tumors. And then more recently, in 2017, we have the uh, uh, lutetium uh, dotatate uh, approved for uh, G1, G2 somatostatin receptor positive uh, uh, tumors. But this is it. And this is uh, basically all is officially approved. So um, in this scenario, I think uh, we have some interesting data to discuss here today. I'm going to start uh, talking about some new data of uh, uh, classic uh, cytotoxic agents coming from good randomized studies. Uh, also, I, I would like to discuss some uh, encouraging results with a, a, a number of emerging new antiangiogenic TKIs. Uh, of course, I'll talk uh, briefly because the uh, results were mainly disappointing with Im immunotherapy in the field, although I think there are uh, certain uh, results in certain subgroups that will comment that may, may, may uh, lead us some hope. And then uh, I'll just uh, briefly uh, summarize some novel strategies of, of potential interest. So this is uh, in terms of uh, chemotherapy, a very important trial, the ECOG uh, E2211 randomized study that compared temozolamide alone or the combination of temozolamide and capecitabine. And this is important because uh, this is a very popular uh, regimen being used in neuroendocrine tumors, but we had really very poor evidence. And now for the first time we have good quality data showing an objective response rate um, measured by RESIS criteria of about 30%, uh, not very different for single agent and combination therapy, but adding CAPE sites have been significantly improved and in, in, in a clinically relevant way, progression-free survival from 14 months to 23 months, and also seem to improve survival. More on temozolamide, we have the SONET phase two randomized study that uh, um, um, was conducted in pancreatic and also intestinal nets, so it's a bit heterogeneous population. 20 of the patients were pancreatic nets, and it assessed uh, um, uh, uh, an induction uh, combination therapy of six months uh, of temozolamide and lanreotide, and then functioning tumors would continue with uh, uh, lanreotide, and non-functioning tumors would be randomized to receive maintenance lanreotide versus observation. And the primary endpoint was disease control rate at six months, which was 74% for the whole court, but efficacy of the combination seemed to be uh, uh, similar in all subgroups analyzed, including pancreatic nets, with a DCR of 63% at, at six months. And uh, sorry, and, uh, and uh, maybe more importantly, in this uh, study, they showed uh, with a six months further follow-up uh, after the maintenance therapy that DCR rate at 12 months was significantly better for lanreotide treated patients with 71% uh, uh, DCR uh, versus 42% for the observation arm only. Temozolamine uh, solamide has also been explored in other combinations, such as this with pazopanib in the phase 1 2 study, that uh, well basically uh, showed that um, the combination was tolerable, but at low doses of both drugs, at level dose minus 2, uh, because of those limiting toxicities, basically liver toxicity and myelotoxicity. And um, the um, at least early uh, preliminary results, efficacy results, 
were not um, very striking with an objective response rate of 25%. That doesn't seem to be very different from what we see with temozolamide alone. And of course, we have this very important trial, sector trial, uh, that uh, uh, just completed ACRAL in uh, uh, October 2018 after a lot of uh, struggling. Uh, and uh, this, is going, this is led by Ramon Salazar and is, is assessing two different uh, treatment sequences, Everlimus followed by chemotherapy or the other way around. And uh, the, this uh, very much awaited results are, will probably be available uh, uh, sometimes ne sometime next year. But then I would also like to comment some uh, very, uh, uh, very encouraging data with some new anti-angiogenic uh, agents. I'll start with surfatinib. Surfatinib is a TKI targeted in VGFR, but also FGFR and CSF1R. FGFR uh, has been uh, involved in, 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 in both primary and acquired resistance to anti-VGFR uh, treatments. And uh, CSF1R is also, as you know, involved in um, uh, activation of, of tumor associated macrophages and, and, and tumor uh, uh, immune evasion. So, this is a, an interesting drug uh, developed by a Chinese company. They reported an objective response rate of 17% in pancreatic nets uh, with a PFS of 19 months, a tolerable toxicity profile. And based on these, uh, these two uh, big randomized studies are being uh, run in, in also in Chinese population in, in extra pancreatic uh, tumors and also in pancreatic nets. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, ChiMed just communicated the extra pancreatic uh, uh, trial um, met its primary endpoint. It's in fact going to be presented in September at ESMO. So uh, I, I, I encourage you to, to follow up on this. And, and uh, the pancreatic uh, to, uh, uh, trial is, is also about to be completed. So we'll be, be um, providing some interesting results, hopefully positive also. Uh, uh, also, uh, with this drug, uh, um, randomized studies are being launched now in the U.S. and, and uh, Europe uh, in, in Western population. Next uh, TK I wanted to comment is cabozantinib. Cabozantinib targets VGFR, but also, you know, RET and MET. And it's um, been, MET, MET, MET is overexpressed in neuroquine tumors. It's been involved in net progression and, and it's associated with a poor, poorer outcome. This drug has been shown to be better than, uh, superior to uh, Everlimus and, and Sunitinib in renal cell cancer, uh, cancer and it's also approved for treatment of medullary thyroid cancer. And uh, now it's been tested uh, in NETS. Uh, uh, in, in the pancreatic core, uh, it was reported an objective response rate of 15% with an encouraging PFS of 22 months. And based on this, this uh, important U.S. trial randomized study started ACRAL about one year ago and I think will provide us some interesting data uh, soon. It's going to uh, accrue both pancreatic and non-pancreatic uh, nets. Uh, but uh, more recently, probably the most uh, striking results I have to uh, comment are the, the ones from this uh, phase two uh, talent trial uh, led by Yama Capdevila. It's a GetNet study uh, led, um, run in the Spanish group. And uh, results were presented last, last ESMO and have been updated now in ASCO. And for, for the pancreatic cord, uh, uh, really, uh, it, uh, it has reported an unprecedented objective response rate for a TKI in this setting of 42%, assessed by Central Radiological uh, Independent Review, with a PFS of 15 months. But this efficacy, I guess, it comes at a price. This drug was used at 24 milligram uh, uh, starting dose, and at this dose, it's, it's fairly toxic. It's more toxic than other TKIs, certainly. And in fact, uh, over 90% uh, of patients required either dose reductions or dose interruptions uh, due to basically uh, important fatigue, hypertension, uh, diarrhea, and also some cutaneous uh, toxicity. Other interesting trial, although less successful, but uh, interesting is this Nuevo trial. It's a, a GEDNE study led by Enrique Grande, and uh, this was designed in a two-step two uh, Simon design. The first uh, step uh, was uh, communicated uh, now in ASCO with 17 pancreatic nets that were treated with a combination of uh, sunitinib and evophosphamide, you know, a prodrug of 
phosphamide that is um, activated basically in hypoxic conditions. And uh, the overall response rate was encouraging uh, with 18% response rate, but the trial has been halted due to toxicity. Evophosphamide uh, required a dose reduction in 100% of patients, basically due to uh, um, bone marrow toxicity and some liver toxicity, and uh, it had to be interrupted in, in half of them. So this is too bad. Regarding immunotherapy, I have to tell you what we have, but not very encouraging, rather disappointed, not unexpectedly disappointed, I would say. I don't know if they would, should have been tested as single agents in well-differentiated G1, G2 nets. These are uh, uh, low mutation burden, not very hot tumors. But now we have uh, data from three trials, uh, uh, pembrolizumab, uh, in uh, Keynote 028 conducted in PDL1 positive uh, tumors, and the uh, Keynote 158 conducted in molecular unselected patient, patients with nets, with different sorts of nets. The response rate reported from pancreatic nets was 6%, 7%, very short PFS, not really very, very. Um, uh, encouraging. And then we have data with espartalizumab, uh, also an anti PD1 monoclonal antibody, PDR001, uh, that reported the 3% in pancreatic nets. Um, maybe more disappointed were results uh, 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 seen with these agents in high grade nets. We had more expectations for this uh, group of. Uh, poorly differentiated tumors. Uh, we have now data, however, from four drugs, pembrolizumab, espartalizumab, uh, teripalimab, and avelumab, uh, all uh, showing, uh, overall showing a low response rate, PFS measured in weeks, which is kind of depressing. <laughs> And except for the uh, Japanese drug, the toripalimab, that uh, reported for the nine pancreatic NEN, 22% objective response, 50% for those that were PDL1 positive, uh, we'll have to see whether um, these uh, Chinese uh, uh, results can be reproduced in Western population. Maybe more encouraging, however, is this uh, dual blockade with anti-CTLA4 and PD anti-PD1. This is a basket trial, the DART uh, um, SWOG trial, uh, and the uh, results on the neuroendocrine court were reported in, uh, at AACR, uh, uh, and they report for high-grade NEN an objective response rate of 44%. And they, they are uh, building up a, a specific pancreatic cohort that's still lacking that will provide us some data hopefully soon. In line with this idea, the June study led by Yamaka de Villa uh, uh, in, the, in the Getne group um, is going to, is assessing du uh, the dual blockade with Duvalumab and Tremelimumab in several cohorts. It includes a pancreatic cord and also a high-grade cord. That uh, this has been all, all cords have been completed except for the lung one. So I hope that for next year we will hear something about these results. And. Um, this recently launched uh, study would be also interesting is uh, assessing uh, in a basket trial the combination of cabozantimib and atezolizumab. It will include also a pancreatic cord, uh, and so I hope we can bring us some new results here too. Uh, regarding other uh, therapeutic strategies uh, uh, of potential interest, I have to uh, talk a few words about antibody drug conjugates. We've got this drug PEN221 that basically consists on a somatostatic analog linked to DM1 uh, cytotoxic agent. Um, um, this um, binds to uh, somatostatin receptor 2. And it's been exploring a phase one study uh, for uh, somatostatin receptor positive neuroendocrine tumors. It's, it includes uh, different uh, cords, including a pancreatic cord. So far, they just reported on safety, basically linked to the DM1 uh, uh, agent. Uh, not much uh, um, results uh, so, uh, reported as yet, but I, I, I hope to hear something soon. Although I'm not sure DM1 is the best choice for neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, regarding high grade, uh, we have this also antibody drug conjugate targeting DL3. It is a not receptor family ligand that uh, uh, is overexpressed in, in NEX. 
um, and uh, this links uh, this monoclonal antibody uh, targeting DLL3 with a pure wall of benzodiazepine dimetoxin that is basically an alkylating agent. You know, this uh, drug um, has recently failed in small cell lung cancer after some encouraging early results. It, it has some, also some toxicity issues. But in this phase one study that was, uh, the early uh, results were communicated at ESMO last year, uh, they were planning to include four uh, uh, high-grade uh, neuroendocrine uh, um, carcinoma cohorts, including a pancreatic uh, cohort. So uh, we hope to hear something soon about this. And uh, also coming to the field uh, uh, are uh, some bi-specific antibodies and bites. Uh, uh, the, the first one uh, for, for low-grade tumors uh, uh, is a bi-specific antibody uh, targeting um, somatosine receptor in CD3. It's uh, an, um, currently a current patient in a phase one study ongoing in NETS. And then for the high grade, uh, there are some interesting drugs uh, like bites targeting DLL3 and CD3 that are currently being assessed in small cell lung cancer, but uh, 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 they are considering uh, potentially to explore it also in high grade next. So um, this is my summary slide. I, I just would like to um, conclude that from uh, this new data, we, we, we are now more confident that chemotherapy continues to play a role in the treatment of pancreatic nets and that we have now uh, some uh, chemotherapy regimens available, such as those based on temozolamide, uh, that uh, are at least as effective of the ones we were using before and, uh, and certainly not more toxic, better tolerated, and also very convenient. They are oral. So uh, probably the first choice if we want to give chemotherapy to our patients. And then there's an increasing uh, number of angiogenesis TKIs that I think uh, eventually are going to uh, be incorporated in our treatment armamentarium. We have now already two agents being assessed in randomized control trials, cabozantinib and sulfatinib. And then we have some very encouraging results from lenvatinib that we hope uh, are followed with uh, further clinical assessment. Regarding immunotherapy, uh, basically we, we have to say uh, they are not very encouraging results, but I think it, it may play a role in certain subgroups, more likely in combination and in high-grade tumors. And then uh, there are a number of new promising therapeutic strategies uh, uh, that are in early stages of clinical development that I also find um, can potentially bring new things to the field. So thank you very much for your attention.